Side Hustle Show 269. Will people pay to hang out with you? How to set up a paid mastermind program. What's up? What's up? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. Let's see if this sounds familiar. You're working hard on your side hustle, you're creating content, and maybe you're seeing a little bit of traction, but the results in terms of dollars and cents really aren't there. That's where my guest today found herself almost a year into her podcasting side project, and with her third child due any minute, she was about ready to press pause on the whole thing. But before that, she decided to offer up a paid mastermind group to her listeners, the chance to work directly with her and several other entrepreneurs for the next three or four months. It was basically like a Hail Mary pass to say, I didn't say this publicly, but in, in my mind and in my heart, I knew if no one signs up for this, I'm kind of done with this biz chicks thing. That was Natalie Ekdahl, the founder of bizchicks.com, and it's chicks with an X, and she's the host of the Biz Chicks podcast, which is now over 300 episodes. So what happened with her Hail Mary pass? She ended up getting five women to sign up, join, and importantly, pay. And those five people were pivotal. They kept her going. They proved her concept. They laid the foundation for everything Natalie's built since then, which includes the premium mastermind groups we're going to talk about today, a speaking and coaching practice, and even a live event. I invited Natalie on the show to illustrate a few things. The first, of course, is how a relatively small number of customers can make a huge impact and how you can build a substantial business with a relatively small audience. But beyond that, I wanted to get her insight on how she structures and prices her mastermind groups and makes them worthwhile for everyone involved. The Side Hustle Nation Inner Circle Mastermind was the first thing I really sold on Side Hustle Nation, but I put it on pause after our son was born and haven't picked it back up. Through this conversation, I've got some ideas on how I might be able to revive it, and my hope is it gets your gears turning on how you may be able to transition from one-to-one work to one-to-many and start to monetize your content, your network, and your expertise in a unique and win-win way. Notes and links for this one, along with a free downloadable PDF highlight reel summary, are at sidehustlenation.com slash natalie. Before we dive in, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, FreshBooks.com. FreshBooks is the affordable cloud accounting system that's recommended by 97% of small business owners, and it's built specifically with side hustlers and freelancers in mind. And how about some safety in numbers? FreshBooks has helped 10 million entrepreneurs, myself included, get paid and keep the books in order come tax time. As a Side Hustle Show listener, you can claim a 30-day completely free trial at freshbooks.com slash side hustle. That's freshbooks.com slash side hustle to start your 30-day free trial today. This episode is also brought to you by Pitney Bowes. No matter what you send or how often, Pitney Bowes has your sending solution. You can print postage right from your office and take advantage of special discounts such as saving three cents per letter versus the price of a stamp. Plans start at just $5 per month. And for Side Hustle Show listeners, Pitney Bowes will do you one better. They're offering a free trial, so you're sure to find the solution that's right for you and your business. Visit pb.com slash side hustle to learn more and try it free. Terms apply. Please see site for details. That's pb, like peanut butter, dot com slash side hustle to start shipping smarter today. Now, if there's a theme for this episode, it's about leveling up your mindset, your customers, your prices. So naturally, that's where we started. I'll be back with my top takeaways from this chat with Natalie after the interview. Ready? Let's do it. I think I've blocked out how little I charge. And I was actually trying to go back before we got on the call to look, but I believe I charged something around like it was either 297, 397, or 497 for the entire thing. Let's just call it, let's meet in the middle. Let's just say it was 397 for a three month mastermind and a one hour coaching call with me. Okay. It's an interesting thing to sell because it's like, you, okay, you're selling your own expertise and insight, but you're also selling your, your ability to curate a list of unknowns. It's like, I promise I'm going to bring together some other awesome people for you to network and mastermind with. And it's like this thing that like doesn't quite exist yet, but it's like, I promise it's going to be awesome. Like it's a tough thing to sell. It's like, it's a weird. It is. It involves a lot of trust on the person. You really have to trust the person who is creating the mastermind. And that's why I actually really don't want people to refer someone directly to my mastermind. That's never heard of me. I'd rather they refer them to the podcast to listen because 
if you start listening to my podcast and you like me, then I will build trust with you. And I will be talking about my program on air. You'll hear it directly from me. So every once in a while, I'll get on a call with someone considering the mastermind and, and they don't know who I am and they've been referred by someone. And I actually, I don't really like those calls because they're asking me so many questions that other people never ask. Right. So my listeners and my audience that have been around for a while, you know, if you've been listening to me for a year, you know, like, and trust me and you believe in the program I've created and you're, it's really just a chance to see the calls now when we do those calls. It's really about just answering any questions about how the program's going to work and assessing what group would be best for them. So really trying to get to know them and their business and their needs so that we can match them to the best group. Okay. I want to get into kind of like that application process, that vetting process in a bit. So basically you say, okay, call it 397 for a three month thing. Is this like weekly? Weekly calls. Yeah. And I was still figuring out the format. So those poor ladies, like each week was a little different. At first I felt like I needed to give some kind of training. I felt like I needed to add value to them. But what I learned throughout that group was the value was in bringing them together. Okay. And I want to say there's a difference between group coaching and masterminding because I hear the word masterminding thrown around as a lot of different things. And so I think it's confusing when someone has what I call a pure mastermind program, which is what I have. So in a pure mastermind program, no one is teaching. So the, the influencer or the person leading the group, the facilitator is... That's you. In this case. Yeah. So for me, I am facilitating the ladies helping each other in the group. Whereas in a group coaching program, I would be doing a teaching or training, and then we might have a Q and a where people might be interacting, but generally in those situations, the business owners or the people, members of the group are not helping one another. Okay. So my very first group, I felt like I needed to add value and do some trainings and it was really all over the place. But now that's, that's not what happened. We have a very set structure for the way our calls flow and you start to know what to expect week to week. And we're putting people together, a mixture of people from all different backgrounds and situations to create diversity in the group. And I can go more into that if you'd like, but we're putting together people that we think are uniquely suited to help one another. Okay. What makes a good group? Yeah, we'll get into some of the, uh, you know, how the pricing has leveled up since then and, and the different tiers that you have now. So I think that's really impressive. But yeah, what goes into that initial interview, that initial application vetting process? We have a, a great intake form where we have people apply and they share a lot about how long they've been in business, what are their strengths and weaknesses, a little bit about their background. We want to know their revenue levels and their goals and what they're hoping to get out of a mastermind. So we learn a lot. People actually share a lot. I think sometimes our forms can take we use Typeform as the application software, and I use the free level for a very long time, which will work for majority of people. But in that software, it actually tells you some statistics and how long it takes people to complete the form. And so sometimes people are spending 15 to 20 minutes completing the application. So they're really thinking through and spending some time on it. Okay. What I'm trying to create is an amazing brainstorming opportunity for the women that join the group. So I'm trying to create a situation where they can get out of the box ideas from the mastermind. When we study successful teams that are the most creative, when we look at teams that are the most creative and come up with kind of out of the box ideas, they tend to be the most diverse. So I have taken that training from that research on teams and applied it to my masterminds. And so I am trying to create as much diversity as possible. So in our masterminds, they tend to have my favorite size is six to eight people, but I feel like four is about the minimum and 10 is about the max to have kind of the situation that I'm trying to create, whereas everybody's able to give and receive input. Okay. So I'm trying to create diversity. So we'll never have people in the exact same industry or business. People will be from different industries. They'll have different educational backgrounds, different personalities, different strengths and weaknesses from different locations. We're trying to create as many differences as we can in the groups while seeing how things link together. So usually I can see as we lay out a group, so-and-so is creating a tech business and this other person's a consultant, but she actually has a tech background. So I can see how they're going to understand each other's businesses. Okay. I'm also looking for the heart of the person. And that's is what we learn on the call. 
I want the person to be teachable and committed. So if I'm on a call with someone and on all the calls, whether I'm doing them or a team member's doing them, we're trying to also add value to that person's business in that moment in case this is the only time we ever get to talk to them. So we will speak into their business and give them a couple ideas. If the person is very not teachable, if they are not open to receiving input, then we kind of know that that's not going to be a fit because the whole point of the group is you're coming to it wanting advice and being open to new ideas. So we're assessing that when we're on a call with someone. Okay. That makes sense. We're kind of like, um, yeah, this is not going to be a good fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would be the ideal group structure? Are these applications, these applicants coming from the podcast listenership from the email list? Like what does the marketing look like today? Well, I'm just coming off of my very first live event, which was, it ended like almost three months exactly from when we're recording this. It was in October. And that ended up being the most amazing way to sell my programs. So it was way more successful than I anticipated, but it's, it's really, I would say it's the combo effect, right? So people find me through the podcast. I don't blog. I don't have notoriety in any other way. If you find me, you found me from my podcast. Okay. I didn't have an audience before I started podcasting. So that is it. That's how you find me for the most part, unless we've met in person somewhere or you've heard me at a conference. So in general, I would say 90% of people come through the podcast and then they get on my email list and then they get a link to join my Facebook group. So I don't really advertise or promote my Facebook group other than you get a link through my email list. So it stayed relatively small for how long I've had it. And I'm really glad about that after seeing so many people close these humongous groups in the last, you know, four or five months, we've seen a lot of really large Facebook groups with like eight, 10, 20, 30, 50,000 people, people shutting them down because they're so hard to manage. So my group is still under 2000 as we're recording this and I do sell into that group. So if you're really into me, (laughs) you're listening to my podcast, you're on my email list and you're in my Facebook group and you're actually going to be hit in all three places with offers. Okay. But now it's like you're filling these groups like once a year or is it a 12 month program now? So there's a few different things that are happening and I think it will continue to evolve. I still have not had a full year where I just am like, that's a great year. Let's just do exactly the same thing next year. So (laughs) it continues to evolve and I think it will. I think it will continue because every year you're in business, you learn more and learn more and you learn who you're attracting and their needs as well. So ideally I would love to just host Biz Chicks Live once a year and fill all my programs and then just start taking care of everybody for the rest of the year. But I think there'll always be some other times to join. So at Biz Chicks Live, which was in October, we sold the year-long program for my six-figure and beyond clients. And that program is a year and includes three in-person retreats. And we meet twice a month for 90 minutes and we do three hot seats on that call where we shine the spotlight onto someone's business and they get to ask the group a question and we just, we are just only talking about their business for that period of time. So basically they're each in the hot seat once a month because we, there's six people in those groups. It's a smaller group of six. Oh, okay. Jeez. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I have two of those groups. And when we have our retreats, they all come together and interact and meet. Okay. So we're having our first retreat in a few weeks and all 12 women are flying in from all different places. And that is when we will do in-person masterminding and we have guest experts come in as well. And that group, the price to be in that group ranges from 1500 to 2000. The people that are paying 2000 are also getting a 25 minute coaching call with me and Voxer access to me. So some people are doing the mastermind and coaching and some people are doing just the mastermind program. So two grand a month and then you have the, you're basically pricing out your own time at a thousand bucks an hour. I wouldn't say you could exactly, yeah, I guess I, I guess I am. It's Voxer access too. Yeah, that's true. And Voxer access as well. So I call that 911 coaching. Voxer is like what all the cool kids are using these days. I never heard of that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Voxer is a voicemail app. If you haven't tried using it, I've gotten all my family members to use it too. Even my parents 
they know if they want to talk to me, that's the way to talk to me. All right. So it's just a way to just quickly get feedback. And I really feel like that is one of the most valuable things you can have with me is to literally be able to talk to me at any point in time. And the clients that I'm attracting and, and working with, they're not abusing it. You know, it could be like every minute someone boxering you, but these are busy women yeah. and busy professionals and they're not on boxer all day long. To go from charging like we said, what was it, three ninety seven for the first thing? Yeah, it might have been two ninety seven. Three or four years ago, right? I was I was right at that hundred dollar a month price point. I think it was probably two ninety seven. <laughs> okay, call it, <laughs> call it hundred bucks a month. Totally been there to charging two grand a month. Like, yeah. what was that hurdle like? And, and imagine this is you know over several years, but like yes. that's a big leap to make. It was a big leap. And you and I, we've been at several conferences and we've met several times in person, but we we had a great conversation at FinCon 2016, which was in San Diego. So I think that was like end of September. And I was just starting to make the transition in my mind to working with this higher level client and to up-leveling. And I, I really had some turning points at that conference. The closing keynote was was about thinking bigger and could you 10x your business? And I had also started to discover, you know, in reflecting, I had some time at that conference, I took a couple extra days to just work on my business. And I was able to really see that I had had some masterminds where that very first group was really six figure business owners, but my masterminds after that were not. And they would be a mixture with say one or two six figure business owners and people at some different levels. I think that for masterminds, just one of my biggest takeaways for anyone wanting to start a mastermind, I don't think masterminds are right for someone that does not have a business yet. I think that a group coaching program is better for someone that is just getting started because there's so many hurdles to tackle to make that first, say, five figures in your business. So for my mastermind programs, you need to have made at least $10,000 of revenue in a year, in the last year in your business. I feel like if you've gotten to that mark, you've figured some things out and some strategy out and you've understood your who you're attracting and who you're not attracting enough yeah. to, and you've, you've had enough skin in the game and to be able to advise others on their business too. I feel like when you're first starting out, maybe you're not the right person to be giving someone else advice on their business. Yeah. I had learned that there were these different levels of people, of business owners that I was attracting and, and I started imagining what it would be like if I had a group of all what I call high performing women together. Now you can be a high performer and have zero revenue in your business because you're just getting started. But these are people that really move rapidly and they have gotten over a certain number. You have to get over a certain number of mental hurdles to make six figures in your business. And I started imagining what it would be like to bring them all together. And they're hard to find, right? They can't find each other actually. So that is a service I'm providing. And that's one of the reasons I'm able to charge a premium for those groups is there are fewer of them. I think that some of the statistics are, you know, that 10 to 15% of, of women entrepreneurs ever make six figures in their business. So I like to say, I found your peers for you. (laughs) I found your people for you. Absolutely. Come sign up. Yeah. And they want, they're dying to know each other and they don't necessarily fit in where they live and they don't necessarily have friends who have businesses. Their family may think they're strange and don't understand what they're doing. So part of what I'm providing is just the service of bringing them together. Yeah. And then I've also created a great program that helps them grow their business. Do you ever get stressed out about like, did I provide two grand worth of value this month (laughs) or, or whatever the price point is. No, I, I really don't. And especially with, I mean, it's, I was very nervous when I, the very first group, I wanted to make sure that I am providing value, but I try to take my own advice as much as I can. So I'll have clients that'll say, you know, I just want to over deliver. And I remind people, you don't have to over deliver. You just have to deliver. I just need to make sure that I'm delivering on what I have offered. And for the masterminds, it's bringing together a group of people that can help each other. And through the process we have, I feel like we're doing that. And 
I think, again, the confidence building over time, having people that have said that the mastermind changed their business, people that have completed the programs and said being in a mastermind just was a game changer. And then at BizChix Live, we had several people that had only ever known each other online get to meet in person. And we had a few groups where it was like the whole entire mastermind was there and they'd worked together like a year before. So oh, that's awesome. It was really amazing to see them come together and... And what was great at the conference is that people were talking to each other, right? You know, that's what conference goers do. They're like, so did you, you did her mastermind. What was it like? Did you like it? And so I had people able to get real-time testimonials face-to-face, which I think is what helped so many people want to sign up for the mastermind programs this year. Okay. So I actually have five masterminds going right now, three of which I am not facilitating. So I have team members facilitating. I have a team member that sold the, this is what I call my programs. Elite Chicks is for women that have a business at the five figure or beyond level. And CEO Chicks is for women that have a mastermind that's six figures, multi six figures or seven figures. And this is real next level stuff. Now you're like, hey, I'm selling my expertise and my ability to curate this awesome group for you. And by the way, I've delegated the actual facilitation of that group to this other person that I trust. That actually was, I think, a bigger mindset hurdle to overcome than charging a thousand or more a month. I believe it because you're the face of the brand. Yes. But if you have a, I basically have a service-based business. If you have a service-based business, you cannot grow it unless you train people to do what you do. So if you have a dance studio locally for kids, you need to hire other dance teachers that teach in your style. So I had a friend sit down with me and say, you know, Natalie, you need to have other people facilitate your masterminds. And I remember the first, my first reaction was no one can facilitate the masterminds like me. Yeah. You got to be crazy. That's what people are paying for. And she said, no, that's not what they're paying for. They're paying to be in a mastermind in the way you've created them. And they're paying to be with women that you've attracted. So I have attracted a certain type of entrepreneur to me and a certain personality. You know, every Facebook group we're all in, they're all a little different, right? Based on the leader. And so I have attracted these certain type of people to me and they want to spend more time with each other. And so we're creating ways for them to do that. Then another hurdle that I just recently dealt with was letting someone else sell into my program. So some of the women in my five-figure program, I've actually never had a conversation with because they talked to someone on my team who shared with them about the masterminds and sold them into the program. Okay. How about the level of sales, the level of hustle required to fill these groups initially? Because these are not small investments, even the the live event. It's like, I got to jump on a plane. I got to get a hotel. Like... You make it sound like, oh, I put it out of the podcast, put no. it in the Facebook group, apply here, <laughs> and you know it's off to the races. Yeah, I want to be really real about that. It involves <laughs> a lot of hustle, a lot of hustle and follow-up. And I love that phrase, the fortunes and the follow-up. We'll get on calls with people. You know, people will apply. You know, I have a momentum in my business, which you can probably hear and feel that people are going to sign up for things that I put out there, but are they going to completely fill Probably not unless we're doing some hustling. And by hustle, I mean that we're, I'm not meaning we're cold calling people, but we're following up with people because people will express interest and then forget or they get scared. So I think we need to remember that people signing up for our programs have mindset issues going on for them too. And investing in yourself is a big deal. It can be a hurdle to help someone make that investment. And so we will follow up with people. And I love using Loom. Have you heard of Loom, Nick? Loom is like the screen capture software. Yeah. And you can also use it to just record a video of just you talking. Oh, okay. So you can, you have a choice. You can use it to capture your screen only. You can use it to capture your screen and a little bubble of you on the side so they can see you and the screen, or you can use it just to record a video of you directly. And I I love it because it's super fast and easy. And then it's stored in the cloud and you can just send a link to the person. And then you get notified when they've watched it. So, you know, they've seen it or at least watched a few seconds of it. Okay, cool. Oh, this is useloom.com. L-O-O-M. Yes. And so I will send people a personal video after a call And just share why I think the program would be great for them or to fall. If I have a couple other ideas I want to share with them or if I have any other details about the program I want to share. 
And I have a great success story I'd love to tell you about. Let's hear it. I had a, a woman at BizChicks. So she attended BizChicks Live in October and she signed up for my CEO Chicks program, the $1,500 to $2,000 program. And she wrote on her application, she wanted to sign up and pay in full. And she had some things go on where some things in her business didn't go as she expected. And she, long story short, she ended up telling me, I can't move forward. We'd had several months go by. So this was in October and, and our program launched in January. Yeah. I was so bummed because I knew that we could help her business. And I knew a bit about what she's struggling with. She's a very successful multi six figure business scaling to seven figures, but is dealing with some issues with her team and with getting more profit out of her business. And I just knew that she also needed community, that she didn't have the community around her that she needed. And so I was really bummed and you know, I just kept her on my list of people to follow up with. And so a lot of people would have taken that no as a no. And I've learned from my clients that are really good at sales that no doesn't ever really mean no, it just means not yet, or I haven't overcome your objections enough. And I knew she was also dealing with some scarcity mindset. And I've since learned there's some more in her background around that. And I can totally understand why she was, it was a big hurdle for her to leap through. Yeah. Yeah. So I just followed up with her every couple of weeks and would just say, Hey, you know, I'm just checking in to see if anything's changed with your situation. I, I still believe this program would be wonderful for you. And just let me know if there's anything I can do to help you if you'd like to hop on a call. And she wouldn't respond. And I ended up right before Christmas, I had one spot left in my masterminds and I really wanted it to be for her. Yeah. And so I sent her a Loom video. It ended up being 10 minutes long, just telling her about the other ladies in the group I wanted to put her in and why I thought I'd be a great fit for her. And if there's anything I could do to help her, I would love to. And I also said, you know, also, if you just want to work with me in a one-time strategy session, that would be great. I would love to help you in that way too. So long story short, she ended up saying yes. (laughs) So she joined the program right before we started, like literally like, I don't know, five or six days before we had our first meeting. And it's just one of those things to just, it's a fine line, right? We don't want to bother people. And sometimes I'll say, hey, would you mind just reply back if you're a yes, no, or maybe? Mm -hmm. Because then I can know how to best serve you. She told me that the video I sent her, the personal touch I showed really made the difference for her. Yeah, that's awesome. And just made her want to trust me and move forward with the program. And I, in that, in that video, I talked about how I understood the scarcity mindset she was, and I understood the fear of it. This is a big investment and that I hope she'd trust me that it would be really worth her while if she did it. Yeah, it is. It is a big investment and hopefully she'll see some, some great return on that this year. And in your case, it's kind of incremental revenue because you're like, well, I already got five people. I'm doing the group regardless anyways. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it was significant and it's worth, I think the more people are spending on your programs, the more it's worth to invest that time in those sales. I'll say, I do want to give a shout out to live events because hosting, and I know that for most people that it's a side hustle, they might not think that it's something they could create or pull off. But I think even a a small live event of like a meetup, if you're at a conference with many people that in your community, getting a chance to talk to people in person makes it so much easier for them to say yes to work with you. And so one of my goals going forward is that any conference I'm at is to create a meetup or a way to work with me in person at that event. And then for the sake of reference, the Elite Chicks, the five-figure program is a six-month program, $3,000 or 600 bucks a month, current pricing. Of course, that may change in the future versus the CEO Chicks, that $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Exactly. So the six month program, they meet weekly for 60 minutes. And we find that at the five figure level, it's best for them to meet weekly for accountability, because there's so many different ways they could go in their business and get unfocused, that they really need to meet weekly. Also, there's a lot changing in their business, because they're still nailing down strategy. So that weekly touch point is so helpful. That pricing that group does not meet in person at a retreat. So we encourage them to come to BizChicks Live so that they can meet in person. But that is like a six-month program. We hope that all or most of them will renew and go another six months. And we plan to be adding, we'll launch more of those groups again in June. And then for the CEO Chicks program, I had a number of people that have masterminded with me in the past or that are interested in the program, but weren't ready to start in January. So we're going to launch one more group of those to start 
they'll start in April and then be able to go to our second retreat, which will be in May. We're going to do that one on the East Coast. Okay. Have you ever run into, well, it's like I got four solid applications and I re, it re, it's really better with five or six. And you're like, do I run it or do I just like keep pounding the phone lines to get that next couple people on there? Or is it just like, I got to scrap it. I got to put this on hold until I get the next application in. Yes to all of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I've done a group with four people and I decided I won't do that again. Really five is my minimum. Yeah. That four group was, it was fine. It was a good group. Those people in that group would say that they got a lot out of it. What was a struggle was if one of them couldn't make it, then we had three and me. And really I was more of a mastermind member versus facilitator. I was contributing a lot. I always give my input on everybody's hot seat. I wait for the group members to give input to each other because often they'll say some of my input anyway, and I don't want to take away their chance to give each other advice. But that group was not as dynamic and interactive as it, it would have been with more members. So I steer clear of a group of four. I think five is really my minimum. So yeah, I will keep trying to get people into the group until the last minute. I'll do more promotion into my Facebook group. I think Facebook lives are a really great way. You know, there's a lot you could do with retargeting if you were at that level in your business and running some ads. I really think everybody's so busy that sometimes people are interested in signing up for things and they just kind of forget or they're comparing so many different options and then there's so many options they don't know what to do and they do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there myself. Yeah, me too. And then I think a lot of times it's in in that call. I think really getting people on the phone and as a person selling programs, getting accustomed to making the ask, you know, is this something you want to do and following up right away, like sending them the ability to pay right away. Some people do high pressure sales where they're like, you have to decide right now, or you don't get this bonus. I, that doesn't work for my personality or my audience. I don't think it probably does with you, your personality. I can't see you doing that, Nick. Yeah. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily sit that well, but so is that the close? Does it seem like something you'd like to move forward with? Let me send you the, the PayPal link. Yeah. Just trying to see what they're thinking. And usually people say, let me think about it. It's a big decision. And I'll say, no problem. I'm going to send you the link. I think sending that right away is really important. I think that there's a lot in that call. That call is really important and it's, it can be uncomfortable. I really just try to, and I'm not saying I'm the best in the world, but I've had success. And I think a lot of that is just showing that you understand where someone's coming from, doing a lot of listening versus talking, I think is important. And people want to have confidence that they're making a good decision. And so sharing authentically why you think this is a good decision for them. Yeah. And understanding what their biggest objections, like what's, what are you concerned about? And what else could I share with you? I think it's really helpful. And that call can be very important. Yeah. There's other people that are already a yes. The call is just like, they just want to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, no, I can tell those calls are fun. They're like I'm in. Yeah. They're just like, okay, it sounds great. Like what, what do I do? What, how can I pay? Can I pay right now? And I'll be like, wait, let me just send you a link. And then you can pay. <laughs> like, yes. Yes, you can. And then another thing I want to say that's interesting, Nick, is that we learn about these funnels and people have to work their way through the funnels and we have to give them a free offer. They find us and we give them free content and then we give them a lead magnet and they work through the funnel. Well, I have had people go straight from podcast listener to CEO chick paying me $1,500 a month Yeah, with nothing in between. It's a powerful medium. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I also had a few people that heard me speak. At, I spoke at Podcast Move and I had a panel. I have one or two people that found me from speaking. So I think there's a lot to be said about, again, live events, the opportunity to speak in front of groups of people. The connection time when you're speaking in person is so much faster than it takes through podcasting or through video even. Yeah. So... I love that. And I think that's available to all of us. And if you have a room of 10 or 15 people of your ideal client, you could convert 25% of those people to clients. That's a pretty standard number. Sometimes people convert 50% of a room. <laughs> so wow. yeah. And, and so it doesn't have to be a, that huge of an audience if it's the type of person that you're looking for, if it's a room full of them. Yeah. And if the offer makes sense and you're not 
selling a three ninety nine book like me, you're selling a big, big ticket mastermind product that uh, makes a lot of sense. I'm certain, Nick, that your audience wants to mastermind with you <laughs> and you have a much bigger audience than you did in 2014. In fact, I would love to have your size audience. And I think that's a really cool thing about my business is I don't have a humongous email list. I don't have a huge listenership. And I don't mind sharing what those numbers are if you if you want to hear. Well, if I guess go ahead. <laughs> so my <laughs> my email list is twenty five hundred people, which for as long as I've been in business isn't that big, and that's because it hasn't been a huge focus. It is now. Yeah. And my listenership, what I would kind of be able to guarantee a sponsor, I could guarantee a sponsor that I would get thirty five hundred listens per episode after like four to six weeks. Yeah. So anywhere they range, you know. But people love you. I bet you get a great open rate on that list. I have a great open rate, probably anywhere from 30 to 40% on my first time I send something out. That's awesome. And I have my Facebook group, which has 18 or 1900 in it right now. So I have a, for some people, they're like, I would love to have like that many people listening or on my email list. But other people are like, oh my gosh, that's small. And I think it's really, I've really gotten very focused on who I'm talking to and the content I'm creating. The content I'm creating is mainly for that high level entrepreneur, the established entrepreneur that's emerging to six figures, has six figures or multi six figures moving to seven figures. So I adjusted my content at the end of 2016. And I'm really talking to that higher level entrepreneur. I don't teach people how to start businesses. You're not going to hear a really basic episode like that, teaching you those yeah. things, because that's not who I'm trying to attract. And I'm not trying to serve everybody. I'm very clear on who I'm trying to attract. And the cool thing I've learned is that when I'm talking to this higher level entrepreneur, entrepreneurs below them are listening because they want to learn or they just love learning. So they're kind of listening to other shows that are more teaching them how to start a business. And they're hearing mine about building a team and scaling and those, those challenges. And they're kind of looking for where they're going. So it's been great to be very focused on who my avatar is and who I'm trying to draw to me to be part of my programs. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for sharing those numbers. That's a good sized audience, but it's not crazy unattainable numbers either. No. And I think you've gone about it in a smart way, kind of marching toward that thousand true fans. And you could build that, build Biz Chicks Live and build these different programs where people can get more of you. People love it. So that's really cool. Natalie, thank you for joining me. Lots of moving parts in this business and giving me kind of a lot to think about, which I know is the mark of a good episode. You can check it out at bizchicks.com. It's chicks with an X. And we'll uh, wrap this thing up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. My number one tip is that everyone has a high-end offer in their business. So no matter what you're doing, even if you're not working directly with people right now, say you're a, an Amazon FBA person, you have a high-end offer. There's people that are following you that would pay a high ticket price for your expertise. So say for a VIP day of coaching with you or for a high-end mastermind, I think that it just takes the confidence to put it out there. But I believe that everybody has a high-end offer in their business they could make. I like it. Natalie, thanks so much. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Nick. This is so fun. This edition of the Side Hustle Show is brought to you by FreshBooks.com, the cloud accounting solution that's recommended by 97% of small business owners. I was chatting with Rob Eng, who's actually a senior marketing manager at FreshBooks, about a new feature they're rolling out called Proposals to help you win more jobs. We found that our estimates is a great feature when you kind of know what the job is, but we wanted to help business owners win more jobs, and that's through Proposals. So we're pretty excited because what that is is really an expanded estimate that allows you to add content, images, uh, you can show what value that, that you can provide to your client up front, and which includes maybe attachments of your work, if you're a designer as an example, testimonials from, from other customers. Um, you could even outline you know, how you want to proceed with that project. And what's great is it's all integrated within FreshBooks. So when you do win that job, you can easily convert that into an estimate and you could have them pay up front or a deposit and have it all sync in, so it's all within one system to make things a lot easier for you. Visit freshbooks.com slash side hustle to start your 30 day completely free trial today. That's freshbooks.com slash side hustle for bookkeeping bliss in rockstar support.
All right, my top takeaways from this call with Natalie. Number one, people need to know, like, and trust you first. In Natalie's case, that's where the podcast came in. Through 300 episodes, she's been delivering valuable content for years, building trust and familiarity with her audience. And from there, people can go into her email list and her Facebook group, but started with the podcast. So the question is, what are you doing to build that trust? Takeaway number two is price is perception. Price attracts the participants you want to attract. And you can't apologize for it. If she put together this CEO chicks program for six-figure entrepreneurs and then slapped a bargain basement price tag on it, that would be a disconnect, right? And I'll be honest and say the pricing thing is still a major sticking point for me in potentially relaunching the Side Hustle Nation Mastermind. Like where's the sweet spot that makes it a great value for members, but also makes it worthwhile for me? Or do I go down the delegation route and find a handful of trusted moderators. Lots of things to think about from, from this call, but price is perception. That was takeaway number two. Takeaway number three is curation is creation. Curation is creation. Of course, it's about you and your expertise, but it's also about the other people you bring together. You're the hub and there's value in that. It was really interesting to hear Natalie make the distinction between group coaching, which we'll cover in an upcoming episode, and masterminds. In her setup, she doesn't need to provide any lessons or lectures. It was about the people she brought together who otherwise never would have connected and them helping each other. So what do you think? You think there's an opportunity to host a paid mastermind for your side hustle? Would you be interested in version 2.0 of a side hustle nation mastermind? Let me know in the comments at sidehustlenation.com slash Natalie. While you're there, you'll also be able to download the free PDF highlight reel summary of our call. That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show. Hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app, and it'll be automatically beamed to your device next Thursday morning. I'll see you then. Hustle on. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 